All right. Well, welcome, everybody. Uh, we appreciate you coming out and joining in this day. And I, it's a special day for us, and I, I know it's a special day for Keela. Um, I, I have a few thank yous, I think, that are really important. I know Father thanked a lot of people. Um, but I, I want to thank you. Thank you for um, everything be a sounding board through this process. Uh, coaching searches, no matter what coaching search it is, it can take up a lot of time. And there were many people involved in this one. So thank you very much. Um, and it, it, interesting story that I didn't know with Father, and Keela may refer to it, but um, so it was in his office one day, a couple weeks ago, and I don't know, we were just talking, and somebody else was in there, and he said, oh, um, you know, Maris came up, and he said, oh, my, uh, the, the coach at Maris, the, the head coach, was one of my high school teachers, um, Brian Georges, so, um, and I know how happy Brian is for you, Keela. And, and that speaks volumes. So yes, so Brian George is the head coach at Maris, was one of Father's high school teachers. It's a small world, small world. We, we say, uh, and, and Brian, he said, oh man, Susan, that just, that only tells me how old I really am. <laughs> so, but I wanna thank you, Father. Um, thanks, Frank, Dr. Frank Montecalvo. He was a huge sounding board in this process and I appreciate your wisdom uh, through all of this. Denny McGlenn, our general counsel, working through all the, all the details and all the wisdom there. Our search committee, we had a great search committee. It provided uh, great questions, great insight, and they had so much experience here at St. Francis uh, across the university and I appreciate you guys taking the time and being part of this uh, selection process. It's never easy. Um, and then just, there were a lot of folks that met with the candidates, spent, spent the time. Um, whether you were on the agenda or whether you met them as they were coming through the hallways across campus, thank you very much. Um, you know, we always say it's a, we want it to be a family here and it never, disapp you know, that part of it never disappoints and it, it's so, it's so cool and it's so critical. Um, Father Joe mentioned the staff um, and I want to thank them. And I think they're, they're, I think I saw them walk in. Uh, Megan, Bria, Matt, um, Joe Ritigliano, our, one of our GAs. Ali Williams was one of our GAs. Abby Davidson. You know, this, there was a lot of change this year, a lot of transition, and they never wavered. They never wavered. This all hap started happening in mid-November, mid um, and they just kept working, and we just had to pick up and, and do the best we could, and so I thank you guys, um, because they tried to keep things as positive as possible, and we just continued to work the whole year. And I wanna thank our team. Ladies, you guys are here. Um, appreciate you. You know, I told them um, in the last couple of days that I just thanked them because it could have been very easy. It could have been very easy to say, uh, you know, just put this season aside. And they didn't. They, they, it took a little while to get the chemistry going, but I, I just thank you. And I told them they've been very patient through this process. Been very patient. And they talked about um, two seniors, we talked about the qualities they met as a team, talked about the qualities that they wanted to see in the new coach. And it was cool when I met with Sam and Cece that those qualities were really lining up, you know. Um, and so I appreciate you guys. Thanks for working hard. Thanks for being patient through this process. Um, you know, I, I got to speak to um, Brian Georges, of course, the head coach at Maris, who I've known for a while. I got to speak to the legendary Paul Westhead, who coached the Lakers, who uh, Keela worked for at Oregon. And um, yeah, he's the guru of go. And um, I spoke to the AD at, at Maris, Tim Murray, and they all had such positive things to say. They were, they were genuinely happy for you, Keela, genuinely. And I think that speaks volumes. Um, she has friends here. Some former colleagues here, a couple former players at Penn State are here, and I always think that always speaks volumes too uh, about the integrity and the character of a person, not just they could be a great coach, but let's face it, if they're not a great person first, these people ain't coming. They're not coming. And so thank you guys for being here. It was great to meet you. 
um, you know, I think I, we could go through where Keila's been, but you probably read that. I'm not going to list list all that. She has a, a lot of experience under a lot of really good head coaches. Um, you know, some like I said, some legendary coaches have done some really good things over the history of women's basketball and the history of basketball. Period. But I think what Father alluded to is Keila's a mission, a person of mission and purpose. And if you talk, sit down and talk to her for 15 minutes, you, that's going to come out. Um, and I think, yeah, maybe it, it's it, we all take different journeys and different paths. Um, and you know, as you learn about her, you'll learn her her path has not been uh, the smoothest, as probably none of ours are. But uh, it's her journey and her path, and she's ready to mentor these guys, mentor these guys, and hold them accountable. Um, she has a plan. She's going to be a person that is going to have a plan, and she's prepared. Um, as, as Brian said, she takes more notes than anybody, <laughs> and uh, but that's because she's she's going to be prepared, and you know she's going to mentor she's going to mentor our team, and that's it's, it's going to be. You know, we want to hire coaches ultimately that they're not just going to be in our student athletes' lives for four years; it's going to be their life. So. I always thought of it as we want it to be a lifetime experience and not just an experience of a lifetime. And that's what I think she feels she's called to do. And um, I know she keeps in touch with a lot of former players that she has coached over the years, so that will be very important. Um, you know, she's going to care about them as people. She's going to push them. She's going to push them to be the best they can be because that's, that's what you do as a coach and to probably get them to do more things than they thought they could do. And, uh, but she's going to care about them as people first, and that, that's really critical. That's really critical for us. Um, and I, I think she gets it in terms of building community on campus and in the local community. You know, I, did, I worked with her for three years. We obviously were in, um, you know, working where we did at Penn State, we were in the community. And I know they do that at Marist. I know they do that. And they get a great crowd at Marist. Uh, the people come out and that coaching staff is engaged in the community. And that's going to be really important uh, for her to can you continue to do because you guys like that. I think you like it, and I th think it's important. And for people to come here, we want to welcome them, everybody that comes in this arena. We want to welcome them. So, and that, you know, those are, the, those are the things that are, like, intangibles that you just can't see on the surface. You know, the recruiting. Like her experience in recruiting, she's been a recruiting coordinator multiple places. She's recruited in Central PA, Western PA, Mid-Atlantic region, Ohio, all the areas that we, that our players are from, you know? And that if you look over the history, that's where they've been from. And we've had some really good ones. We've had some really good local players um, and, you know, players from all those areas that have been tremendous. And those, that's going to be the recruiting stronghold. And she's got good connections in all of theirs, all of those areas. You know, I'm excited. I think she'll, I don't know if she'll talk about it today, but I know she talked with the team a little bit. I'm excited about her coupling the fast break system with the motion offense of Marist. And I think from just from a basketball perspective, players in this league, it'll be hard to defend. It'll be hard to defend, and it'll, um, you know, it'll teach the kids the game of basketball. And I think that will be really cool. She's really big into skill development. So that individual development is, is important. As a player, you want to know you're going to get better every year. You want to know you're going to get better every year. And you want to know you're going to be challenged and be taught you know, the things you need to do. And she's got a lot of experience in that area, and it's something that's very important for her. So I, you know, Keela, I'm, I can't be happier for you. I know all the people in your life. Your brother Paul, he's probably watching. Her brother Paul is a Dominican friar out in Chicago. And um, I'm sure he is overjoyed and really excited. So, and hopefully your family in Louisiana. She's a Louisiana girl, but she's not afraid of snow. <laughs> Believe me, she's lived in a lot of snowy places. <laughs> So it's not, it's Poughkeepsie is, wor is worse than the mountaintop here. So, Keila, we can't be happier for you. And we're excited. You know, you, you were kind of the only candidate also to talk about going to another level. You, you mentioned that. Like, what's the next level that we can take it? Because I think you experienced that at Marist. 
you know, being a small school, um, similar to we are, not many students, you know, location where it is, you, you know, they went to a sweet 16. Like, the, so I think in your mind, you're, that's kind of maybe what a little bit of your thought process, process is like, take it, you know, where can you take it to the next level? And you mentioned that, and I'd say you were the only candidate to mention that. So we just want to welcome you to the Red Flash family, and podium is all yours. Before I get started, I, I'd like to share something with you. I, I, I have a, a, a St. Francis cross here. And uh, when I was in Memphis, prior to coming back to Marist, uh, I w was a part of St. Francis of Assisi Church in Cordoba, Tennessee. And when I come to a new place, I search out the churches because I want to find a place where I feel that, that uh, I'm needed, that I'm wanted and where I can make a difference. So uh, I had called back to the church to, to do something, and I told them that I hadn't found a church home yet. So they said, well, why don't we send you a little care package just so you can, you know, you can remember us at St. Francis and, and uh, you know, until you find a home. And this is the cross that they sent. So uh, on my interview here, when I walked into the gym, I look up and there's a cross on the wall. So. So pretty cool and pretty special. And um, last year I did a Bible study with the student athletes at Marist, and every night that I walked in, I put this cross at the front of the table. So I brought it in today to where it belongs. So good afternoon, Red Flash family. I read a daily devotional by John Maxwell every morning. And the day after I interviewed here, the devotional for that day was titled, The Call of a Leader. And it began with the scripture passages from Isaiah 6, verses 1 and 8. And it read, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, here I am, send me. The first eight verses of Isaiah 6 illustrate how God calls many leaders. When Isaiah receives a vision from God, the Lord lays out a need for someone to speak for him. God has a message and is looking for a messenger. God issued a general call for anyone, and Isaiah took it personally. He did so because of three factors that make up a divine call to lead. Opportunity. We see a specific place where we can make a difference. This has to do with timing. Ability. We recognize that we have the God-given gifts to do something about the need. This has to do with competence. Desire. We want to step out and address the need. Our hunger pushes us. This has to do with our passion. Opportunity, ability, desire. The opportunity is St. Francis University and its women's basketball program. My abilities are displayed through my resume, that I am prepared to lead this program and I am ready to fulfill the need. And my desire to be a part of this great university and athletic department will enhance my passion and allow me to thrive every single day as the head coach at St. Francis. 
St. Francis University had a message. And Father Malachi and Susan were looking for a messenger. And I said, here I am, send me. I am truly honored to be the head women's basketball coach at St. Francis University. I'd like to give special thanks to Father Malachi, our St. Francis University president, Susan Robinson Fructal, our director of athletics, the entire search committee, and everyone involved in the interview process. You have chosen me to be that someone to lead this program, and I do not take that lightly. The mission and values of St. Francis and the university will be integrated into our program, and we will strive to be a model program on this campus, in the central PA community, in the NEC, and throughout the nation. I would also like to give a special thank you to my Red Fox family, Coach Brian Georges and the women's basketball staff, Tim Murray, the director of athletics, and the entire athletic department and college community. Words cannot express how grateful I am that you embraced me, allowed me to be who I am, and gave me the opportunity to learn and grow in one of the most successful mid-major programs in the country. You have been the wind beneath my wings. I could not get to this point in my life without my parents, Nola and Charles Whittington, who are deceased. They baptized me as a Catholic and shaped and molded me into the person I am today. And I know they are looking down from heaven and smiling from ear to ear, <laughs> telling everyone in heaven, look at my daughter, <laughs> the head coach at St. Francis University. Also, my brother, Father Paul Whittington of the Dominican Order, Central Province, my sisters, Vinay Kino and Christine Whittington in Louisiana, their encouragement and support throughout my life is something that I cherish with all my heart. I have many friends who have traveled here to join me today to show their continued love and support for me and my career endeavors as well as many who are watching online and following on social media. It really does take a village. I am forever grateful for all of you, and now my village is a part of the Red Flash family. I know and understand that I am following in the footsteps of five very successful head coaches of the women's basketball program who have all won NEC championships and taken this program to the NCAA tournament. Jenny Pozikwas, Mindy Hill, Jill Poe, Susan Robinson Fructal, and Joe Haig. They laid the foundation for success and their accomplishments are written in the history books. A new era begins today. And I will embrace our history and winning traditions and use my experiences and expertise to take St. Francis University to the next level. I invite you to come along for the ride. Let's go Red Flash. Altoona Mirror after nearly 30 years as an assistant coach. 
Did you ever think this day would come for you, that it would be about you as a head coach, and, and how, how excited are you for that opportunity? Thank you, Corey. <laughs> uh, yes, I, I absolutely knew that this day would come for me. Uh, throughout my journey as an assistant coach, I always felt that every coaching opportunity that I received was a part of God's plan. Uh, each next step, each next place that I went to and, and uh, you know, my job responsibilities, the things that I did, the people that I met, uh, you know, to be in those places at that time and to experience those things in people's lives, I have no doubt that that's where I was supposed to be at that time. You know, God says he does not work by clock or calendar. So, you know, in some people's minds, they're like, oh, my God, you've been an assistant for so long. Like, will, will this ever happen for you? Well, if you trust and believe like you say you do or like you should, then you got to know that it's going to happen. So I, I wasn't questioning, like, how or why not this one and why not that one? I was just waiting, you know, Lord, your will be done. And when that time comes, I'm going to be ready. So, you know, for this opportunity to have opened when it did and, you know, to have an opportunity to work with Susan and to be a part of this great university, there's no question that I was ready, that I knew it was going to happen, and this is the place. So I'm happy and I'm really excited. <laughs> You know, there's, there's no question about that. This is, this is where I should be. This is the time when I should be here. Yes? What about this place draws you to it? And, you know, you show a lot of emphasis and a lot of passion about St. Francis already, having been here for all of two days. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, um, I mean, it, it has always been important for me to coach at a Catholic university. Having a brother who's a priest and, and watching teams play, Catholic schools play, and the priest is sitting on the bench, I could always imagine that my brother would be sitting on the bench with me. You know, so now I get Father Joe, hopefully, who will, who will join me, or Father Malachi one day who will join me on the bench. But, but I've always been inspired by that um, experience, but, you know, it was important for me to find the right place where I felt that there was that opportunity, that I had the ability to accomplish it, and the desire to, to do something great. And when I began to research St. Francis, I, I talked a lot to Susan. I knew that Susan had come here and had been really su successful. But in reading the mission and the values of the university um, and understanding that this is what I I have done all my life at, at every university I go to, you know, I'm not just a part of the women's basketball program or the athletic department. I'm a part of the university. I'm a part of a church community. I'm, I'm reaching out to people and doing community service and putting myself out there. So why not do it in a job that I love and a place where I want to be and where I have great people who will support me? So it just all came together and, you know, out of all the, the head coaching interviews I've, I've been involved in, this was the first place when I was sitting in the, the interview and in the meetings. You know, I finally thought to myself, like, this is where I should be. This is the place. For me, I, I just felt it. Uh, I didn't know if they were going to say, come, 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 you know. <laughs> but I felt in my heart that, you know, I, I think this is the one. And hopefully they will feel the same. Yes. You've had other coaching experience in the styles in those systems. What will your style be now that it's your turn to be that coach? Well, I, I got a chance to talk to um, our, our young ladies on the team yesterday, and um, I talked about the, the fast break system uh, that they've run for the past couple years. And, and uh, you know, as Susan said, I worked for Paul. Westhead, who was the guru of Go, who technically invented the fast break system. So I showed them some film yesterday of what that looks like. So it's a, it's a little different than what they're used to. But I love that break, and, and we're going to start with the, with, the, with the break. But I'm big on secondary offense and transitioning into something else and, and also teaching them the motion offense so that if, if someone uh, figures out how to stop the break, then we're going to be able to execute down in the half court. Um, I, I also will we'll have set plays and, and, and set offensive sidelines and, and uh, under the blobs, under the basket. Um, I'm a man-to-man -man defensive type person, but I'm going to understand our personnel and, and, 
And if, if we need to play zone, we're going to play zone. If we need to press a little, we'll be able to press. So, so we're going to combine a lot of the things that they've experienced the past couple years and, and make it a really special uh, offensive and defensive system. That was amazing. That was absolutely amazing to, to know that, um, you know, they went through probably summer school, fall, and beginning of the season with their coach, and then their coach is not there. They have no coach. Someone else steps in and coaches them, and, and then they're trying to find their way. They're, they're struggling initially, and they, they get in conference. They're doing well, but you know, not as well as maybe they could have done if they had that type of stability. And then to, to, to fight throughout the season, uh, the conference season, and fight in the tournament, and make it to the championship game and have an opportunity to win, that's amazing. That, that's a lot of heart, desire, and effort. I spoke about that yesterday. Those are the, the values and the things that I can't give them. If they bring that heart, desire, and effort to the table every day when we step in, inside those lines, then, then their dreams are going to continue to come true. Uh, they, they said that the reason why they came to St. Francis was to win championships. If you bring those intangibles to the table, it's going to happen. Heart, desire, and effort. Working hard, it's going to come together. Throughout this program's history, they've had some of the best players in this league's history. Jess Noble, Wes Wayne, Gally Williams, Jess Kovach. What, what is your system in terms of the way you recruit? Do you try to go after a star and build a team around a player, or are you more uh, focused on a lot of you know spreading the, the points out and getting more balance? Just what, what kinds of things do you like to do? We're going to play team basketball. So a part of the system is – they won't know who's going to score this time around. It's not set that if we run down this way and pass over here, only she can score. The system will work if everybody's involved. And I'm more of a team-oriented player. I talked to them yesterday about their assist-to-turnover ratio this past year. They averaged 12.9 assists a game, which means they weren't sharing the ball enough. Um, and that's not a bad thing if, if they were getting shots off, but in order to be a, a better program and to be great, you got to have more assist. It, people can't come in the, in, into the game and know that you just have two players, and if you stop those two, the other people can't score. So we're going to have to be more well balanced. Everybody on that roster is going to have to be able to score so that I can you know, put in five, take those out, put in somebody else, and everybody can maintain that lead. So everybody will have an opportunity to, to be a part of it and, and, uh, and contribute offensively as well as defensively. And how much do you think your recruiting experience within this region, within this state, will help to those ends? Well, my phone is blowing up right now. <laughs> With, you know, with a number of people saying, Coach, I got players, you know, and, you know, I have a number of for former players uh, in the Pittsburgh area who were high school coaches there and friends who were high school coaches there and people in the Philadelphia area and people in the, the, the central PA area and, and people around the country. Um, we're going to recruit people who fit this university. So it's not just going to be about fitting the system because, yeah, I love the fast break system and I love the motion offense and things like that, but we're going to recruit great people first, great people who want to be student athletes as well, and then we're going to evaluate and put it all together. And if the system works that year, we're going to continue it or we're going to tweak it and, and, and fit what we have. But uh, I'm not going to recruit to say we, we have to get all fast people who can, who can score really quickly in this fast break system. I, I want the fit. I want great people first who, who love St. Francis and want to be here and want to be a part of this program and then, uh, you know, who want to, to graduate with a degree from here. They want to be student athletes. So uh, the system won't be the end all be all. We're going to find the, the right fit. You mentioned the uh, team meeting you had yesterday. What do you think was the reaction from yourself and from the team? And do you have like a specific message to the team about that meeting? 
Okay. The team, um, I'm going to say initially, when I first started, you know, at, at this point, it's a new coach. They're nervous, so, so I couldn't get a, a, a read from them initially. But as I went on and they were understanding what I was speaking about and, you know, I saw a lot of heads nodding and things like that. And then um, by the end of it, um, they were talking. So I wasn't talking a whole lot. They were talking and speaking about how excited they are about being a part of this. And, you know, I led with, first and foremost, you have to want to be here. So if you want to be here, academics will be important. Being a great basketball player will be important. Getting better at being a great basketball player will be important. Lifting and conditioning and getting yourself in shape will be important. You know, I love social life, but but if it's going to interfere with all those other things that are important, then, then we're going to have a talk. But if you want to commit and continue that history and that tradition that's already been put in place, that's why they came here. They didn't come here for me. They wanted to be a part of the history and tradition of St. Francis women's basketball. So if you say you want to win championships, then it's a whole new level of commitment. And they were excited to say, Coach, let's do this. So I'm, I'm pretty pleased. That'll con conclude today's press conference. Again, I want to thank everyone who uh, came out to show support to Coach Whittington and those who watched on NEC Front Row uh, to the team. I hope you're ready to run through a brick wall, because I am after listening to Coach talk. Um, JD's here. We'll take some pictures with Coach and Susan and Father Malachi here in the backdrop. And then feel free to mingle and get to know Coach um, here as we have cake in the back and some refreshments.